Hey there, this is John Alexo from ProSite Tutorials, and in this video, I'm going to explain how you can install and also use Google XML sitemap. And if you don't know what a sitemap is, well, it's a page similar to the one that you can see right in front of you. And this page looks really ugly, but don't worry because this page is not for your website visitors to actually be able to see it. This page is only for the robots that are sent to your website to be, be able to more easily find the content that you have in your website, especially when your, your website starts getting bigger, you have a lot of content, it may be hard for them to find your new published content. And by having a sitemap, it makes the, the robot's life a lot easier because they are able to find your content more easily. And for that reason, they can index it on their search engine more quickly. So that's the reason why you want to have a sitemap. So for you to install this plugin, you need to go to your WordPress dashboard. Once you are in your dashboard, you want to go to the plugin section and simply add new. And you want to go to the search box and write Google XML sitemap. So you want to write sitemaps because that's the the right plugin that you want to install. And it's this first one. So I'm just going to press install now. And the next page, I'm going to activate the plugin so I can start using it. Okay, so once you install this plugin, you want to get to settings and once you get to settings, you will see that you have a new option appearing on this listing. I'm going to click on XML sitemap and the standard configuration, which comes with this plugin is pretty much good for most blogs out there and you really don't need to do many changes. However, if you want to understand the, the options that you can see on this page, this just stick there because I'm going to explain each one of them. Okay, so you can see that you have this link over here and this is the link to your sitemap. And once I click it, you can see that I can see the sitemap for this website. And since this is a new website, it doesn't have many pages. So you don't see so many links as you saw previously for this other website that I have. But once you start adding more content, you will be able to see more links appearing on your XML sitemap. Okay, so let's first talk about the basic options. Uh, notify Google about updates of your blog. This means that each time that you publish new content or edit content inside of your website, it will notify Google. And this may help uh, Google send their robots more quickly to that new or edit content inside of your website so they can crawl it and index it inside of their search engine. Same thing with Bing. So it's pretty much the same option, but in this case for Bing, search engine. Add set map URL to the virtual robots.txt file. Well, this is a file that you have inside of a website that basically tells the robots the way that you want them to navigate throughout the content inside of your website. Now, some robots sometimes have, uh, have a hard time finding this page in your website. So you may want to include this option, which has the URL of your XML sitemap inside of your robots.txt file. So those robots will have an easier time finding that page inside of your website. Advanced options. Quite honestly, this, this three first options as you can see on this listing, it's something that is not really important nowadays. So I'm not going to waste my time explaining it. Include a uh, XSLT style sheet. Actually, what you are seeing over here is a style sheet and the style sheet helps you more easily see uh, the content that you have inside of your XML sitemap. But the robots don't really see this page in this way. What they see is, once I actually uncheck this option, this is what the robots see inside of your XML sitemap. They see the information in coding. So in this case, I'm actually just going to leave this option. And below, include sitemap in HTML format. Sometimes a few robots have or time uh, or cannot read uh, your sitemap in HTML uh, format. So you may want to include this other format so they can uh, read, so they can find your sitemap and read it 
in HTML. A lot of anonymous statics. I'm actually going to check this option and this will allow you to send anonymous information about your your WordPress uh, version and other pieces of information about your website to the owner of this plugin and this allows them to gather data and also improve the their the performance of their plugin so I'm going to check this option additional pages well that's me let me actually go to the front page of my website so you can better understand this option as you can see the front page of my website is working as a blog that means that each time that I publish new content it will appear on this section now let's say that your front page of your website is not working as a blog but you have your blog section in another part of your website what you can do is you can grab for example the URL belonging to that that blog section of your website so let's say that my blog section of my website would be in this URL I would just grab this URL paste it over here and the reason why I would want to do that is because this way you can set a priority to that page this means it will tell the robots that go to your website how important is this page that you have in your website so actually let's just set it to 0 0.7 also, you can set a frequency. This means how many times is that page in your website updated. And this may help or not the robots send more frequently robots to that page so they can find new content inside of your website. So I'm actually just going to put daily and just leave it this way. Post priority, you have three options appearing, comment count, uh, basically, this uses the, the number of comments inside of the post to calculate the priority of that post inside of your website. And you have over here other options. So choose the one that you find the most suitable for the, the priority of your post inside of your website. Setmap content. Uh, basically, this, this will include the specific pages that you want appearing inside of your XML sitemap. In this case, I have my home page, the posts, static pages, and also you may want to include the categories. Now, when it comes to archives, other pages, tab pages, I really don't find that that really important to, to include inside of my sitemap, so I'm not going to check these options. Include the last modification time. This helps uh, the search engines uh, see the, the latest updates inside of your website. So I'm going to check this option for that reason. Exclude items. For example, exclude items. Let's say that you don't want uh, posts that belong to a specific category inside of your website appearing inside of your XML sitemap. So what you would do was you would simply check the category which you don't want appearing inside of your sitemap once you do that and press update changes then all of the posts belonging to that category will no longer appear inside of your xml sitemap and you can basically do the same thing with posts you just need to grab the id belonging to your posts and the post that you don't want appearing inside of your xml sitemap change frequencies this really depends on uh, the frequency that you update each page inside of your website if for example your home page is working has a blog and you write uh, daily content in your website then you might want even to put hourly basically this will tell the robots that uh, this page in your website is constantly uh, adding new updates and this may, as I said previously, this may help the robots send more often uh, robots to that page. I mean, the search engines more often send robots to that page so they can find new content in your website. And basically, you can do the same thing for posts, static pages, and so on. And lastly, we have priorities. This tells the robots how important those pages are inside of your website. And I, I really believe that the standard option that comes over here is pretty good and it doesn't really require any kind of changes. So I'm just going to press update options. And also if you want for some reason you, you did something that you 
don't like and want to reset the options to the the standard options that came with your installation you just need to press this button over here and the last thing that you need to do is notify search engines about your search your safe map or your main safe map and all sub safe maps so what you need to do now is just press this button over here and this will notify all of the, the search engines about your your latest uh, updates in your site map and so on so this is something that you want to do so that is basically all that you need to know about Google XML site map so you can integrate it inside of your website if you enjoyed this video please subscribe like so you can receive my weekly video updates where I talk about WordPress about SEO about how to make money online and much more stay there and stay tuned with pro site tutorials and bye